All right, since I'm the last speaker, it's my uh, role to thank the organizers. And it's a little bit uh, embarrassing because the organizers made a big mistake inviting me uh, to speak much less, not to mention inviting me to be the last, uh, the last speaker. But, and furthermore, I've hardly spent any time here. I've only watched a few of the talks. So I can only judge by what I saw, but I do believe that this has been uh, a huge success and, and uh, has inspired people to, uh, to think about things that they might not have otherwise. I know I learned uh, some things just by being here uh, for a couple of days. And so let us all applaud the organizers for their, uh, for their massive work and their commitment to this, uh, making this happen. Now, I, I, I have a, a request. If anybody has a car and after the Q&A session is, can convey me to the other side of the uh, you know, I would be very, very grateful because otherwise I don't know how I'm, what? Okay. All right, I would be, because otherwise I hope I can get home tonight. That's the, uh, right. Well, this is where we left it the last time. And uh, as I said, if for some more varieties, a full screen. I do want to go full screen, but then I probably want to go full screen. Let me see. Yeah. There's some. OK. OK. Could you increase the size of the text? No. The answer is, at least I'm going to type the answer. <laughs> right. Now, uh, this it doesn't seem to be. This doesn't seem to be working. Doesn't matter. All right. So you mentioned a Shumor variety, which has suddenly become called X. I don't know why. It's uh, even. And for a given pi infinity, which is a uh, discrete series, uh, there exists a unique uh, finite dimensional representation with the property that uh, well, if you tensor with any other finite dimensional representation, or if you take the uh, cohomology in degree other than the middle degree, you get zero. But the uh, dimension of the cohomology, if you make the right choices, then you get a one-dimensional cohomology space. So that, if you plug that in to the formula at the top, there's supposed to be a pointer. As well. Yeah, at least I've got a pointer. Then this essentially is just one one dimensional space which has some structure but but not uh, necessarily of interest to us now now if l0 is uh, greater than 0 l0 is this number we've already seen but it's going we're going to see it again in another guise uh, then every tempered pi infinity uh, with this uh, with non vanishing cohomology is isomorphic and this is was proved by Borel, Wallach, and also by, independently by Zuckerman, to a specific parabolically induced representation uh, of the form of P is a fundamental parabolic subgroup uh, whose, and fundamental uh, it means that the, in Langland's decomposition, the M0, so A is, is, is a split uh, torus, M0 is, uh, reductive group of the same rank as k infinity and being the uh, unipotent radical. So this part gives us uh, the possibility of a discrete series. And then it's induced. I won't explain what the, the, the notation is. It is induced from sigma, a representation of m0, 0, 
uh, some normalization of the character of A, and the infinitesimal character is determined by the highest weight of V, so that again, uh, there's just one option up to the, uh, well, it's not, there's not just one option. There's one option for the discrete series L packet of M0, and otherwise it's, it's determined. Is that clear? So, oh, now it's working. So then there's a unique Q0, and you already saw this formula uh, today, uh, such that uh, in, or was it yesterday? I lost track. So if you replace GK infinity by a G uh, and the Lie, the Lie algebra of K, then the H, the relative Lie algebra cohomology of the tensor product is different from zero, if and only if I is in this range between Q0 and Q, Q0 plus L0. And besides that, the dimension is, uh, that should be an I. That, that should be an I in the denominator. Uh, the, is the, uh, is the uh, binomial coefficient. So one at either of the ends and some, some uh, binomial uh, coefficient in between. All right. But there's more structure than that. I mean, this is, this is, these are the dimensions of spaces of exterior uh, powers of something. The dimension is, in fact, remember A. Oh, I did not say this. A, this is important. I think I didn't say this. Oh yeah, a dimension of A is L0. L0 is precisely the dimension of the split part of the uh, fundamental parabolic. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, what does it mean that you replace K infinity by the... Oh, that means that if you look at the top of the... At the first formula, it's GK infinity with an, uh, the group. And at the bottom, it's the Lie algebra. And I don't want to worry about the difference between... I mean, the difference between the relative Lie algebra cohomology with the K infinity and relative Lie algebra cohomology with its Lie algebra is that the K infinity may be disconnected. And I don't want to think about that. There are, are lots of issue, issues with disconnected maximal compact subgroups in, in the theory of real, uh, in real representation theory. All right, so here, the uh, dimension of the Q0 plus Jth a uh, cohomology space is the dimension of the jth exterior power of the dual of A. It's the algebra. Okay? But even more than that, w when you look at the calculation, you see that the cohomology, everything other than A disappears uh, from the calculation. What's left is the exterior algebra of A star or uh, you like a free rank one module over the exterior algebra of A star. Now, A is only defined over R, whereas this cohomology space, which, uh, let's see if we've seen this, this is the uh, pi f eigen component, uh, isotopic component of the cohomology, which we can realize in various ways. It's, uh, and there should be cusp there because everything is supposed to be uh, unitary. Uh, but I'm leaving that out. The, uh, the isotopic component has a rational structure as a vector space over a number field, which is the field of definition of pi f. Uh, v, uh, well, I suppose that V is a rational. I'm also simplifying, oversimplifying. V is not necessarily defined. Uh, the, 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 co the coefficients are not necessarily defined over the rational numbers because G has representations that are defined over number fields. But in practice, the field of definition of V as a representation of this algebraic group G is contained, or you can think of it as contained in the field of definition of pi F. So there is some number field attached to any uh, automorphic representation uh, that is realized in cohomology because cohomology has a, basically a Q structure. And everything that I'm saying here is rational over this, this field. Is that, uh, is that clear? Now, Venkatesh's conjectures uh, introduce a rational structure on A star so that the action, uh, remember the lambda, the exterior algebra on A star action on this cohomology space respects the cohomological rational structure. So let me just go back very briefly to what this is. Um, 
what this is when you when you take the the I can I can write this on the board if I can find some chalk of of S is equal to uh, m pi m of pi times I mean, the, the pi f's cancel in some sense. So what, is, what you get is m of pi times h, uh, the, the relatively algebraic cohomology, all right? And, uh, if, and if we, let's say, v tensor over, let me introduce this notation, which I won't use again. So E of pi f is a subfield of C over which uh, this is rational. This has a, an E of pi f rational structure. And if you like, you can just assume that E of pi f is equal to Q because it's just going to clutter the board. So let's assume. This is, not, this is usually not true, but sometimes it is so that we can just forget about that. Um, here, this is actually, of course, not literally true. We're assuming that pi is, uh, is stable. Let's so see, see pi is, contributes to the stable part of the trace formula, so then all of these different components occur with equal uh, multiplicity. So let's just not worry about that. Uh, there, are, there are hypotheses that one makes that imply that conjecturally, anyway. That are made in, in a Venkatesh's paper. So, so this is, let me write this again, is isomorphic to uh, lam, uh, my A's to the M of pi. So it's a free rank multiplicity module over the exterior algebra of A. And the, exterior, and the multiplicity should be one, by the way. So but, V is something dependent on pi infinity. Sorry? Uh, so V here should depend on pi infinity. Okay. It should depend on. But the pi infinities, yeah, uh, yeah, that's. So more than one pi infinity contributes. Uh, so I guess maybe that should also be, yeah, there should be, that should be in the multiplicity. The, the number of me the mem members of the packet. All right, so now let's suppose that it it's a Shimura variety. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to postpone, uh, I'm going to leave you in suspense as to how Venkatesh defines this rational structure. Now let's suppose we have a, sh a Shimura variety, so it has a Hermitian structure. In that case, the tangent space at x, that's this Hermitian symmetric space, at a, at, at a point, the fixed point, remember x was the fixed point of, of our maximal compact subgroup, uh, has breaks up into the holomorphic and the anti-holomorphic part because it has a Hermitian structure. And uh, this gives, but the tangent space uh, is isomorphic, the complexified tangent space is isomorphic to the complexified Lie algebra of G uh, modulo the complexified Lie algebra of K because that's because the homogeneous space. And it has a holomorphic and anti-holomorphic uh, structure. So there is also uh, I guess you saw this in the Shimura, Shimura varieties. You've got a P plus and a P minus in the, uh, in the de decomposition. This is the Harsh Chandra decomposition of the complexified Lie algebra of G. And now we introduce a maximal parabolic uh, whose Lie algebra is this Gothic P. Uh, this is the Lie algebra of K plus the anti-holomorphic tangent space. All right? Uh, this, it's the anti-holomorphic tangent space. This is a maximal parabolic with uh, abelian unipotent radical. Then X uh, embeds in its compact dual, which is a, a flag variety, and a G equivariant vector bundle on X uh, hat pulls back to a holomorphic vector bundle on X, but it's, that's equivariant under G of Q, and therefore defines 
uh, an automorphic vector bundle, which I'll call uh, brackets E on the Shumor variety. You want me to write down how, how, how this happens, or is this, uh, or is this, is, I don't think this has been said anywhere. The, the, the sections of these holo vector bundles are the traditional uh, holomorphic modular forms. All right, so you can get an automorphic vector bundle on uh, E. There's a, there's a, a functor from the category of equi equivariant vector bundles, G equivariant vector bundles on the flag variety to a uh, sub subcategory of vector bundles on the Shimura variety. And by coherent cohomology, I mean the cohomology of, uh, well, this with coefficients in one of these vector bundles in the case when it's projective. And if not, you need to replace uh, the Shimura variety by a toroidal compactification and the vector bundle by a canonical ex Mumford extension. But since toroidal compactifications are not unique, you have to choose one and then you have to show that it's independent of the choice. I don't want to write that down. But there is a, a meaningful uh, notion of coherent cohomology independent of any, anything. And uh, we'll work with the cuspidal part, which has uh, good duality properties. Again, it has a, a version of Matsushima's uh, formula using Dolbo cohomology rather than Duram cohomology. Uh, the point is that a G equivariant vector bundle is determined by its fiber, uh, which interestingly is a representation of this uh, parabolic group, which is not a reductive group, at the fixed point, which is the same as the, as the fixed point of, of, of uh, the maximal compact. And you get this formula, which looks exactly the same. Uh, I had to wipe. Oh. Here. It looks exactly the same. M of pi is the multiplicity. The only difference is that now you have relatively algebraic cohomology with uh, this capital P instead of the capital G. Right. And Schmidt proved that when pi infinity is discrete series, uh, then there exists a unique, uh, for, for a given pi infinity, there is a unique uh, E of tau representation. In this case, that's irreducible representation of P or representation of, of the maximal compact and a unique degree Q of tau such that uh, the relative, the algebra cohomology in that degree is, has dimension one and all the others uh, have dimension zero. And uh, also pi infinity. So the pi infinities and the E tau uh, match, uh, determine each other. And this is compatible with the Hodge decomposition on the uh, on Durham cohomology. It's, in fact, it's a refinement. It's the uh, Bernstein Gelfand Gelfand decomposition. If you've seen that. All right. So example, we should do an example with GL two. Uh, the e tau are well. There's a there's a determinant factor which we ignore. Uh, the bundle forms of weight k. Uh, you can index them by forms of weight k uh, greater than or equal to 2. And in that case, pi infinity is holomorphic. If k is less than or equal to uh, 0, then pi infinity is anti-holomorphic. By the way, the distinction between holomorphic and anti-holomorphic is, is completely arbitrary. You, you have to make a choice. Uh, and these are discrete series. So discrete series start uh, in weight 2 and uh, the complex conjugate of pi, infin of pi 2 is, is pi minus 2. And in the holomorphic uh, setting, your cohomology is all in degree 0. In the anti-holomorphic setting, the cohomology is in degree 1. You may have noticed that one is missing. Uh, when k is 1, then the holomorphic and the anti-holomorphic limit of discrete series both have cohomology with coefficients in the same uh, e, sub, e sub 1. But these are limits of discrete series. The forms of weight 1 uh, are uh, correspond, uh, modular forms of weight 1 correspond to limits of discrete series, and they have the same pi f. Now, more generally, for certain, uh, for certain e tau with uh, parameters on some shifted root hyperplanes, uh, so the ones that, that, are, that are 
partly degenerate, who's, 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 uh, whose infinitesimal characters are partly singular. There's a finite collection, which is a partial L packet of pi infinity, all in the non-degenerate limit of discrete series with the property that, again, there's a unique uh, degree Q of pi infinity. This is a theorem of Floyd Williams, uh, published by somewhat different, uh, proved by somewhat different methods than Schmitt's. Uh, again, pi infinity and E of tau, e, e, pi of fin infinity determines E of tau, E of tau determines a finite collection of pi infinity. Right. Now, also interestingly, uh, the, the set of pi infinity, unitar unitary pi infinity, I should say, with non-trivial relative uh, P, K cohomology have not been classified. The tempered ones, yes, but the non-tempered ones, I think uh, you know, nobody has, has, has bothered to, to uh, classify them. Furthermore, if E sub tau is indecomposable, meaning not an irreducible representation of K infinity, uh, classification may not make sense, but they do have arithmetic applications. I won't say more about that. Now, I believe that, and there's something missing in that sum, so that's the direct sum over the pi infinity. So that should be a direct sum of pi infinity in this set, this partial L packet, uh, that have, that contribute to cohomology, also uh, is a, an induced representation of the same sort that we saw in the, uh, in the case of uh, L0 greater than zero for the topological uh, Homology. You know, I think I, I say I believe that. I believe that it's probably even in the literature for the tempered ones. Uh, for some R parabolic, whose Levy quotient is of Hermitian type, and sigma is a discrete series representation of M, M Q. I think this may be a consequence of the Knapp Zuckerman uh, theorem that was one of the big items, new, uh, news items at, uh, at Corvallis, by the way. It's confirmed the. Uh, the uh, Langland's uh, conjectures for uh, real groups. The full L packet uh, of containing pi of tau should consist, so why did I say a partial L packet? There are, you know, there's the sigma, which is discrete series, but there should be other uh, discrete series in the same L packet that would contribute to a different uh, tau in general, E sub tau. In the same way that even for the discrete series uh, L packet, uh, you'd, get, you'd get different tau. And then maybe there should be several sigma in the same. Now, moreover, uh, again, because there are some uh, groups of order of power of two in the classification, depending on whether you take the adjoint group or the uh, simply connected form, uh, you get some extra groups of order two that I don't want to think about because the real numbers, the multiplicative group of the real numbers is disconnected. You know, that's, that, so that when you're classifying these things, you have to worry about that. Okay, question. Is the cohomology, the relatively algebraic cohomology of this induced representation uh, free of rank one over the exterior algebra of this, uh, of the, of the uh, split component of this uh, par parabolic? Uh, that, if that were the case, then what I'm about to say for Venkatesh's conjecture could be done for a coherent cohomology as well. There's one case where it's been worked out, which is uh, the case of GL2 where there's a holomorphic, there's the limit of discrete series. And then Q of tau is a rank one parabolic. There's only one uh, non-trivial parabolic, proper parabolic in GL2. And uh, it's, the answer is affirmative, although it's not difficult. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind. All right, now I have to uh, make a detour throw motives. I don't know who talked about motives in this conference. I don't know how many people talked about them. Uh, Langlands talked about motives, but there weren't too many. People were a little bit ashamed to talk about motives, as I think Dick Gross uh, mentioned this at uh, Corvallis. People, you know, they would maybe hide their faces when they were put, put motives in quotation marks. And then Deline uh, formulated his conjectures. He introduced an ad hoc uh, theory of motives, uh, which turned out to be the motives for absolute Hodge cycles, as he, as he proved a few years later. And this is a perfectly a workable theory, it was developed formally by Annette Huber a few years after that. Uh, so 
one can work with them and prove a lot of theorems. In particular, the L, as far as L functions are concerned, it doesn't know, know the difference. But to, to say what I'm about to say, you need a, a real theory of motives. Uh, so the L function attached to a representation of the L group, that's tau, and an automorphic representation of the group G, uh, is supposed to be, for certain pi, these are the cohomological ones, classified by, uh, or the, the definition, or the algebraic ones, actually, def defined by uh, Clausel, uh, there's supposed to be a motive, right? Whatever that is, which means a piece of cohomology of something. And these motives have, it's, a, it's, a, it's enough of a piece of cohomology that has L-adic realizations, that has uh, Durham realizations, and Betty realizations. The ones that occur in cohomology are among these at the conjecturally motivic in this sense. There's several conjectures are, are packed into that one sentence. Now, we are going to be interested, or Venkatesh is interested, in the case where tau is the adjoint, or the dual of the adjoint representation. Every group has a du an adjoint representation and a dual. So let's just look at that one, and just call this m sub pi. Now look at the, the uh, well, we've already seen uh, the importance of this representation in, in deformation theory. If we reduce mod L, take the FL etal cohomological representation, then the Galois cohomology, uh, the Bloch-Cato uh, group H star F, uh, controls an E, I don't know, <laughs> whatever E. Yes, it's all over, there's some field E. I didn't in introduce it, but that, oh, there it is. These are motives over whatever, say, the field of, uh, of definition of of, uh, say, the Shimura variety, for example, the, 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 the uh, uh, reflex field of Shimura variety, then this should control the deformation theory of the L-adic Langlands parameter, uh, provided this exists. So, you know, again, uh, we, we can, we can uh, compete to see who can pack the most, uh, the most uh, conjectural claims, questions into the same slide. Okay, here, once we have the motive, we can uh, ask for its motivic cohomology. Now, uh, this is supposed to be a direct sum end. There are definitions of these things, if you have a motive. This is supposed to be a direct sum end of a certain K-theory group tensored with Q and is conjecturally a finite dimensional Q vector space, or more generally an E pi. E pi is, well, I call this E of pi, but E sub pi vector space. So we denote this space va sub pi va for Venkatesh. Um, it is, uh, well, shortly after Corvallis, uh, 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 Bernstein came to, gave a course at, uh, at Harvard in which he announced that within the next five years, uh, all of number theory would be, uh, uh, would be, all of algebraic number theory would be a part of K theory, algebraic K theory. Well, you know, he was excited by the balancing conjectures, but you know, we're not any closer to proving the balancing conjectures now than we were, we were at the time of Corvallis when they hadn't yet been formulated. But here's one of, here's a piece of the balancing conjecture together with block cato conjecture. First, this space is of dimension L0. Let me just say, uh, A, remember, is a Lie subalgebra of the Lie algebra of G, so, uh, the L0, which is the dimension of a piece of, of the, it could be of the adjoint, of the adjoint motive or the, or the adjoint dual motive, it's not surprising that, I mean, it's not totally shocking that the L0 should have something to do, uh, with, of A has, should have something to do with the motive to make cohomology. And this is a calculation, in fact, in Deleen cohomology. Uh, second, for every, so the, I should really, the third one should be seconds. Let me do the third one next. That's, that's Y1. Uh, hypothesizes this. Uh, the Deleen Balanson regulator should be, give you an isomorphism between this motivic cohomology tensored with C and the an appropriate, the Deleen cohomological realization of, uh, or the Hodge-Durham realization of this, of this motive. So that's, and then two, uh, there is a piatic realization, which is the same thing. This is the block uh, Selmer group and the piatic uh, realization of, of, uh, 
of uh, this Vasa pi is isomorphic to the uh, p-adic cohomology. H1 of Q, Q being the, the, the field. So this is the Galois group of Q, Galois cohomology. All right. Now, here's a fact. But you can call this a fact if you accept the, the Locke-Bellison conjecture uh, parts one and three together with some natural identifications in G. Then you, if you have that, then you actually get an, a canonical isomorphism between this, uh, this, this Venkatesh uh, uh, group and uh, ten, the complexification and A star. So that, this gives A star, or maybe you should call this A sub C star, because I told you that A was a real vector space. Maybe it should be A sub C star. It get, has a canonical Q rational structure that depends on pi. So this, this very modest abelian Lie algebra has lots and lots of rational structures that, that are motivically defined, defined by regulators. Uh, why is this? Oh, e of pi, e of pi. Yes, it should be an e of pi rational structure. In there, yes, in the Prasanna Venkatesh paper, e of pi is the, the 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 field of definition is always q. So, I meant e the reflex. Oh, e. Sorry. The oh, there's no here. They're working over. Uh, they're not working for Shim, over Shimura varieties. They're working for for uh, uh, cohomology of uh, locally symmetric spaces. And somewhere in their hypotheses, they say, we don't want to think about the field of coefficients, so let's just assume it's Q. Yeah, so I, I copied, yeah, okay, so that's, uh, yeah, but you should read this if you have, if you add a field of definition, you should make this E of pi. But then you, but if you put in the E of pi, then you have to, then there are, it's more than one, there, 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 you have to tensor over, yeah, there, 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 there are more isomorphisms involved. And the conjecture is that the action, remember the cohomology is a free rank one or rank m of pi module over the, uh, over the uh, exterior algebra of, of A star. And so in particular, A star acts and this, sub, uh, this subspace, this rational or subspace acts. And the conjecture is that it's uh, rational over a field of definition of pi f. Uh, a balance in block Tato. It's not one conjecture. It's a conjecture. That should be Jack conjectures. So, so it's one plus three. Uh, that's one and three. The, one and three are the, the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is the Archimedean part. I, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, this doesn't involve the uh, block Tato part. Actually, it should really just be the the balance and conjecture, but since I labeled it, you know, BVK. Anyway, this conjecture, as far as I know, has not been verified in a single case, but some of its implications, some of its implications have, or say not any, except maybe for some, some abelian motives. Uh, but uh, some of its implications have, surprising implications. And you can look at the Prasanna Venkatesh paper. It's, it's not so derived I mean, this is not really, this is, originally I wasn't going to talk about this, but it seems so, so natural, because, because I was asked to talk about derived, am I getting close yeah. to the end? Yeah. An echo. Mm. I don't know what, how, all right. All right, but now, remember we have this derived Sataki isomorphism, uh, and last time, we had a canonical map of uh, of the yeah. I don't want to explain this. There is there were some invariants, uh, Weil group invariants, but uh, you can modify the isomorphism and you get a map from the cohomology of this torus with coefficients in z mod p d r z into the H one the the first. Uh, cohomology group of the derived tech algebra. But, uh, and this should be a lambda r, not an a sub r. Uh, the reason we look at the H1 rather than the uh, H1, uh, the vial group invariance, is that this is actually, a, there's a map by local duality, uh, which is, uh, which realizes this 
and, and you know, there are several arrows that, that, that I won't, won't write down uh, that give you a piatic realization of the same map, right? Okay, so this is, uh, you take, well, it's basically the, 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 what you get by the, the block Kato uh, isomorphism, right? So a vague version, which is the only one I'm going to give you, of Venkatesh's conjecture on derived Heka algebra states that there is a canonical action on piatic cohomology characterized by local global compatibility, uh, which is to say that the action of, you, you have to turn the arrows in the opposite direction, and, and everybody would get dizzy if I, if I try to, to write this down. It, it takes about five pages to get this down uh, correctly. But, so if you compare this map, and then you dualize, and then you have this acting on the piatic cohomology, and then you compare it to, uh, to th this, to this, then the action is given, then they're the same in some sense. So basically, the action that's given uh, by motivic cohomology on piatic cohomology is the same as the action given by the heck operators, derived heck operators. For this theorem, in order to prove this theorem, the following theorem, uh, Venkatesh actually proves this in, in, in an appropriate case. He makes a number of Taylor, Wiles, and Caligari Garrity type hypotheses and even more simplifying hypotheses. There is, the theorem is that there is an action of this. Now we're, we're, we're passing to the uh, piatic limit. So at this point, lambda v is, uh, I'm not, it didn't say what it is. Lambda v is uh, a QP vector space. And so is this uh, va star pi p. This is this, so we passed the limit in tensor with QP. And there's an action of this on the, uh, localized uh, tensored with QP uh, cohomology. This is topological cohomology by endomorphisms of degree one, and it's uniquely characterized by the property that for any taylor wiles prime Q in a set of sufficiently many taylor wiles primes, this is the number that you should have seen when you saw the taylor wiles method, the two actions of H1 of TQAR on the cohomology, so you've got these two, these two actions. Right? You've got the same H1 of TQ lambda R that maps to the Heck, derived Heck algebra and to, to this motivic cohomology group, that they coincide. In particular, there is an embedding of the exterior algebra, the exterior algebra on this motivic cohomology, the piatic realization of the motivic cohomology in the strict global De uh, derived Hecke algebra of endomorphisms. I, uh, this means you, there's a way of defining a global derived Hecke algebra from the local ones at all the chosen Taylor Wiles primes. You have to take a patch, patch so this, so you so this is, it's not a collection of derived, as you know from the Taylor Wiles patching, the set of primes varies. And so you have to define a global derived Hecke algebra uh, by patching them all and then in order to avoid, then the word strict means that you've made a sensible definition. Oh. Okay, so he actually has constructed this and this is related to the action of the uh, derived deformation ring that we saw in Tony's talk. Oh, I want to say a word about Atanasov's thesis. He's another one who left mathematics, but just after finishing his thesis, it was me. Uh, he, he did the same thing. Basically, he did the same thing for, for coherent cohomology. So we have an automorphic vector bundle of the limited discrete series type. He didn't, he didn't prove that uh, the, the action of the cohomology of uh, A star is, is what I uh, predicted it is. You have prime of good reduction, coherent cohomology is attached to a good integral model. So you can talk about this thing integrally. A pick a pi f that contributes to the coherent com com uh, cohomology. SU of G is now a Shimura variety and let M be the corresponding maximal ideal, then under appropriate hypotheses, it is generated over its lowest degree component by the global derived tech, should be strict global derived tech algebra. And it's the same patching argument. And the action of the degree one derived tech operators can be identified with an action of an appropriate dual Selma group. But I hope he publishes this thesis now that he's, now he's on Wall Street. I hope he, he uh, 
he doesn't he, he doesn't uh, uh, forget to, to publish this. Okay, All right. What's the name of the, the operators of degree one? Oh, operators of degree one. Did, oh, that's the, so uh, degree one derived tech operators are the ones in H. So if you have the derived tech algebra, which is graded, it's the so the derived tech algebra. I, I should say the graded derived tech algebra, because there's an action only of the graded algebra. That's all that's known. Just as there's an action only of the associated graded uh, of the uh, of the derived deformation ring. So the, the, so the derived tech algebra itself is graded. And well, there was I, I defined a derived tech algebra as uh, as an object in the derived. Uh, category a DGA, but it, you know, you take the associated graded. It's it's a como it's a cohomology algebra of that algebra, and the and the degree one part acts by raising uh, degree by one. Uh, so only only the degree one part acts. Also. No, they all act, it all acts, but the degree one part is the uh, only one that that for which one, you know, if you know how the degree one, it's generated by the degree one part. So that's because it's an exterior algebra. So. If you know the degree one part, then you know how everything acts. Okay, so mm. You have the same problems as in uh, Donnie's talk, where you actually don't have a, a DGA, but you don't have one. That's right. But I'm going to get to that. But somehow that's... So uh, in the case of the classical modular forms of weight one, Atanasov's result generalizes. Well, he patches the construction in my, in my paper with uh, Venkatesh, where we do that unique uh, case for GL2. Now, there is a theorem. There actually is a theorem. Uh, uh, in the dihedral case, it's proved in, in my paper with Darmon, Rutscher, and Venkatesh that the action of the dual Selmer group is rational with respect to an action of motivic cohomology. And why is it even thinkable that one could prove such a theorem? Because motivic cohomology is just units in the number field. And in this case, we can write down the units. Uh, they're, they're, we call them Stark units, but that's because of a, that's to, to take a, a known object and make it part of a conjecture. See, the Stark conjecture conjectures that there are units of a certain form, and here the units are actually known, and they're known. Stark's conjecture is is, is verified in the, this and, and, and very few other cases. Uh, this seems to be the only case of Venkatesh's conjectures where the motivic cohomological structure is apparent. And how could it be otherwise when one doesn't know what motivic cohomology is, really? Uh, I should say, what are the units in the case? So dihedral means induced from a character of a quadratic extension. The quadratic extension can be imaginary or real. If it's an imaginary, these units are elliptic units in the field cut out by the representation. So find some. Uh, extension of the uh, quadratic field. In the real case, it's just the fundamental unit of the real quadratic field doesn't depend on the character. So, and the proofs are different in the two cases. And they're quite, you know, they're the sorts of things that could not possibly work in any other situation. So I'm not going to present them because they're very, uh, I mean, I don't understand why, why such a thing works, but it does. All right. So, now, as I said, the uh, uh, Atanasov uses a patching argument, which depends on the existence of a map from the deformation ring. You see, when, when, when Venkatesh proved his theorem by the Taylor-Wiles method, it was about derived Heck algebra, but it used uh, the action of the derived deformation ring in some sense. It used the action of the, of the underived deformation ring in any case. Basically, it was a reformulation of the, uh, the, the uh, caligari garrity method. And uh, as Tony explained, uh, Galatius and Venkatesh define a graded action on the cohomology on the, of the homotopy algebra of the derived deformation ring. But it is not the case that these two are equal. So if you're thinking of the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, Taylor-Wiles method, the Taylor-Wiles method says the underived R equals underived T, but that's not what you get here. Uh, you're, oh, that's only the case in, in degree zero, because as Tony explained, the the uh, the derived deformation ring lowers degrees, and the because it, it it works on up, works on negative cohomological or on positive homological degrees, and the uh, derived Heck algebra works on 
on, on cohomological degrees, but there is a compatibility. Uh, there is a duality. Uh, this is explained more clearly in the notes. And uh, look at this. Uh, the theorem, in this case, says that uh, the homotopy algebra of the derived deformation ring is the exterior algebra not of the dual of va, but of va itself. And it acts in that way. And these, the, if you can imagine how to, uh, the exterior algebra, if you have a free rank one module of, over an exterior algebra, you take the same free rank one module of, over the exterior algebra of the dual space, then they, there's a natural compatibility, and that's what they satisfy. All right. So why, why am I talking about this? Why did, the, why did the organizers think I should be talking about this? This is maybe the biggest uh, uh, question hanging over this talk. But uh, suppose, as, as Tony explained, you cannot get, if you want to categorify, you might think, move to a set setting where, you have, where the, the action of the, uh, the, where the Galois parameter is defined and, uh, and is obtained by, uh, by taking a categorical trace. And that's what we, as we've seen, uh, that can be done over function fields. So, uh, and then we have a classical deformation ring over ZL, let's say L different from, from the characteristic, maximal ideal. And there is a map, uh, that, and under certain hypotheses of Taylor Wiles type, it's shown uh, in my paper with. Buckler, Carrie, and Thorne, that this map is an isomorphism. Okay. Um, irreducibility and, and so on. But as Tony explained, this, this is uh, the derived deformation uh, ring is classical in this setting as a consequence of, uh, of de Jong's theorem, which we use, by the way, in this. In this. So you're not going to, if, if you are if you are, really want to lift the action of the homotopy algebra to an action of the uh, derived deformation ring, you're not, this is not the place to look. Now, if you take reducible representations or the representations attached to non-tempered uh, automorphic representations, then you know, something, you know, there may be something there, but then you have to, it's, then the ring is not, de it's not a representable, so you have to think of it in a different way. All right, so this is what I'm saying. Uh, it, does, it does seem to be agreed. I don't know by whom. <laughs> I, I wrote this down because I talked to people, but you know, maybe they will, they will deny agreeing to this if you ask them. Uh, the, the action of R, remember you have the, uh, the, 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 the parameter, the Lefort's parameter, uh, which is a homomorphism from the, from the vague group of the, uh, of the function field to, the, uh, to the, the L group of G, uh, is, is a, you can get from that a homomorphism from the deformation, if the, if the, deformation, or ring, if the deformation problem is defined, uh, you can get a, an action of R pi to the Hecke algebra, or at least you can make the cusp forms, the localized cusp forms, a module over the derived over the deformation ring, just formally. And it seems to be generally agreed that you can get this by taking the categorical trace, up, applying the categorical trace to the categorical action. <laughs> right? but you have, so you have to localize in a neighborhood uh, on the loxis of uh, rho pi. So you take your rho pi, as you think of it as a point, a local system, an L-adic local system, and you localize. Seems to be uh, generally but it hasn't been written down. So, question. Can this be enhanced to an action of a derived deformation ring? And here, this is, this is a comment by Tony, which uh, says, basically, is a nonsense. Uh, says this is morally already there. Okay, yeah. So, in some sense, there's nothing, there's not, in some, it doesn't matter. He's saying you, it doesn't, this, this doesn't make any sense in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the setting of function fields. There's nothing, there's nothing to see. All right. Right. Oh, sorry. Wait, why is this thing still here? Uh -oh. D 
this thing, this thing go, this is not going to go away. <laughs> how did I, how do I make, <laughs> let's see. Oh, this is, this is very, this is terrible. Click what? Next week. I'm clicking next to it. How far, how close to it? Let's see. It's there everywhere. <laughs> I think this is going to. <laughs> right. Yeah, wow, this is, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> this is an indelible. Tony, do you know how to make these things go away? Are you there? So. What? Right click. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Um, I could quit and then start again, but it might still be there. Let's see. Is that, is that too radical? I've got eight minutes. So. Yeah, I, okay, let me, let me op open again. And then... Yeah, yeah, well, I'll find it. Let's see. Um, if we stop share and then, oh, you don't want to see that. Let's see. Why, why is it not opening? Oh, well, it seems to have gone away anyway. All right, so let's share screen. All right, that's the solution. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is what I already said. I, okay, I have to full, full, full screen. All right. So now, if you, but anyway, who, why, why, why do we work on, on function fields anyway? Uh, because we can. But uh, we can't work with the number of fields. But suppose, suppose you want to, but, the, but this derived action in any case is for number fields. So if you have to, that's what you have to do. So, uh, how, what do you do? Uh, how, how do you get the, get the underived action from the categorical uh, action by taking a trace of Frobenius? Well, a long time ago, Iwasawa explained that the reason he invented Iwasawa theory was to find the analog of Frobenius for number fields. And instead of taking the extension of the constant field to the algebraic closure, take the extension of your number field to its cyclotomic extension. And then you have to take a topological generator of the uh, corresponding ZP, uh, Z, uh, Galois group. All right. So, but, uh, so at least on the spectral side, there is a sensible, uh, a sensible uh, substitute, candidate substitute for the uh, category, categorical uh, Langlands program. Look at, go to the, uh, this, so this is joint work with Feng and Mazur, Tony and Mazur. <coughs> Instead of, what, whatever this, uh, quasi colopsis nope of GLN, you replace the constant field extension by a piatic cyclotomic extension. And it, so, it turns out that, that this has already been considered before looking at uh, the adjoint, uh, so you're looking at the, the adjoint representation in particular over the, over the uh, cyclotomic extension. There was a, this was done by Hida in one of his books a long time ago, right after, after uh, the Taylor Wiles uh, uh, method, and then uh, more recently it was done in a paper by uh, Burangale and Glozel, and they continue with that. So, suppose the uh, representation is ordinary, then as a substitute for the category of quasi-coherent sheaves uh, or its localization at this, at this point, you take the category of modules over an appropriate derived ordinary deformation ring, not of, uh, of your original representation, but its restriction to the cyclotomic uh, ZP extension. 
All right, you can try, you can try that and see what happens. Now, first thing that happens, if you take the cyclotomic ZP extension, then defining ordinary, it becomes problematic uh, because you have lost, the ordinary representations are characterized by the action of this, basically of the cyclotomic Galois group. So if you trivialize the cyclotomic Galois group, there's nothing left. Uh, so you have to make some hypotheses. And this is done, uh, it's very similar hypotheses that were made by, by uh, Hida and by Borongali Clozel and by Tilbin and Orban who have, who have pushed this a bit further. So you can define a derived ordinary deformation ring. And uh, Tilwin and Urban are, have been showing that under uh, some, always you have to make some hypotheses. Like for example, you want the Iwasawa mu invariant to be, to be trivial. That's always uh, a disturbing factor. It turns out to be classical. Once you, it's not classical, the derived uh, deformation ring is not classical at the base, but it is when you go to the top of the uh, cyclotomic extension. And we uh, show that the derived deformation ring, the actual derived ring, not its, its, its uh, homotopy algebra, is the categorical trace of the functor defined, defined by a topological generator of the Galois group. So at least one can categorify and decategorify the spectral side. Now what about the, the automorphic side? Well, uh, um, there's no uh, obvious candidate. <laughs> We know what the decategorification should be. We know what it is should be at every stage. And then there's some interesting uh, uh, considerations that uh, you get not only the cohomology of, say, GLN, but of its inner, inner forms. It comes up automatically. But uh, if we had such a thing, if we had such a categorified analog, we could obtain the graded action on cohomology as a consequence of a categorical correspondence that, of course, one is in no position to try to prove, but at least one could formulate it, uh, and then even promote it to an ungraded action. So that's, uh, but that's a mystery. Uh, now let me just say, I, I've got a couple of more minutes. When L0 is greater than zero, no one has seen most of these motives. You know, so when do you see motives anyway? Well, uh, they're almost never realized in the cohomology of Shimura varieties. Well, now here's a question, but I think I have a feeling that there's a, that Tony put a, a put a, a remark, a discouraging remark on this as well. Uh, so suppose you have a cuspidal automorphic representation of GLN, uh, then pi should correspond to a, a Grotendieck motive, an actual Grotendieck motive, in the cohomology of a Shimura variety attached to a unitary group of signature one and minus one. So you can't say much more about it, but at least you can say a lot about its l cohomology and some things about its uh, uh, Durham uh, realization as well. And so you, for example, you can prove things in the direction of Deline's conjecture on special values. Can one say anything? But now if you want the, uh, the, the, the adjoint motive, well, that would appear, you'd think, naturally in the product of this Shimura variety with itself. So a question, can one say anything about the motivic cohomology of this product of two Shimura varieties that relates in any way to the cohomology of this locally symmetric space? I rather doubt it, but the, but the conjecture would uh, imply that there should be some relation between the motivic cohomology, which in any case you can't, uh, you can't detect uh, in almost any case. So maybe for n equals, N equals three, can you say anything about this? N equals two, even. Uh, sure. The motif in the commodity, it means that it's a, it's a motif in the commodity. Well, yeah, I mean, but actually, I mean, you've got the cohomology, you can cut it out with Hecke operators. So it's an actual, it's an actual motive. I mean, it's, it's realized by, by, uh, by, uh, by projectors. Yeah, but what does it mean in the module? Sorry? Motive in the module. Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, look, it's, uh, you, you can define these Hecke operators acting on, uh, you know, K-theory, for example. I mean, it's, 
I mean, you 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 can you can realize it that way. Okay. And not, and not that I don't think that many people have have actually thought about that because you know, having done that, what what can you what what can you do next? But there, are, in the few cases where Berlinson's conjecture has been verified, uh, where that is it's not verified, but where uh, classes have been constructed, uh, uh, motivic homology classes have been constructed that whose balance and regulator uh, can be computed, then, uh, then you know, people have, have worked this out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lemma has done a recent one for uh, uh, some, uh, some U, oh, if they're 026, I guess. Is that 026 or 024, 024 I guess. <laughs> Well, look here. I mean, say, I'm saying that here you got the motivic. You can talk about motivic homology. At least you have a, a geometric, uh, a, ge a, a geometric object, so you can look at its, at the homological realizations of this, of this adjoint motive, and then it, it's supposed to act on the cohomology of this thing. So, can anybody say any? Can you say anything at all about this? That's the that's the question. Oh, because this, because this is, because the GLN is where the motivic is where the is where the automorphic representation. Is, I mean, the, the motivic homology should be acting on this. So you have an automorphic. I can hardly hear you. The automorphic representation exists on is on GLN and descends to a unitary group, and so. The motivic homology is in here, or part of it anyway, is in here, and, and should it be, yeah. I mean, all right, this is, time is up anyway. This is one of the slides I didn't have time to fill in. This is another slide, and I, I didn't have time to fill in. And then, and then this, this is, these go together. What, what I wanted to say, but I haven't, haven't uh, you know, because because Tony uh, talked about the uh, approximation of the uh, uh, you know the 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 uh, ta taking the full uh, deformation the def the unrestricted deform the, the the deformation the derived deformation a ring with with unrestricted ramification at p and then imposing a crystalline condition and then approximating the 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 uh, the box by by passing to a Taylor Weil system. In, in some sense, the H Hansen and Thorn uh, did this using the Eigen variety, and in some sense, but I haven't really had a chance to go through this and check it to see whether this is what they did. The uh, the Eigen variety, in some sense, gives you all the deformations. So uh, so so the. Uh, Question is whether the the uh, un, the unrestricted deformation ring acts naturally on the on the eigen variety. But I think I'm going to uh, leave it at that. I would suggest. Oh, you have a but what I would suggest is. Because we're going to have Michael to ourselves for the Q and A. Oh wait, where's Tony? Wait, wait, wait. and there's also Yanis, uh, of oh, course. Sorry, sorry. Wait, where? where? <laughs> so why don't we uh, just take a uh, five-minute quick break and then start the Q and A, and then if you want, you can ask Michael a question. <laughs>